Yeah, yeah. So I, I flew over there and I bought a Gladiator in Australia. So it was a right-hand drive Australian spec. Um, and I kind of had to do that because I'm a citizen of Australia, so I can't import a foreign vehicle. Um, and, I, and I sort of did it too because nobody's really gone traveling in Australia with a Gladiator yet. Um, mm-hmm. They get no respect in Australia. Basically, Jeep over there has a very bad yeah, reputation. And Toyota you know, and Nissan, right? To- Toyota. If you off road, it's Toyota and Nissan. Yeah, yeah. And so I kind of I wanted to see if a Gladiator, you know, would handle the conditions and is appropriate for Australia. Um, and I tried really hard to keep it light. That was really my main goal when I built it. So it just has a canvas canopy on the back. Um, and we mm. slept in that thing in the on the ground there in that photo. That's called a swag. And so that's a real classic Australian kind of bushman thing to do. It's, it's sort of like a ground sleeping bag slash tent made out it's, of canvas. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's where tent and sleeping bag overlap. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so it was sort of a pretty simple, lightweight setup. Um, and it went really well. We... You know, we drove everything that I've ever dreamed of driving in Australia from the the really difficult four-wheel driving tracks up in Cape York in the north to the huge desert crossings, including the biggest one in the world. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the river crossings that sometimes has crocodiles. Um, yeah, across <laughs> sand dunes, beaches, kind of just everything, mud, tons of deep water crossings, probably more than even I bargained for. Um, and the Gladiator was great. It... It did everything with ease, I'm going to say. And it was actually really funny to see the reaction of Australians because they're driving their Land Cruiser troop carriers or they're driving their Nissans or whatever. Mm-hmm. They've just never seen what a Jeep is capable of, <laughs> like the, the amount of flex that a Jeep can get. And I would just crawl up something in first gear low range with the Rubicon where they're having to like dump the clutch and get a whole bunch of wheel spin and and get wheel lift and rev the engine really hard. I would walk up something and they'd be like, that that didn't even look difficult at all. You made that look so easy. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it was so, it was really right. fun to, to compare it to other Australian four-wheel drives. So was yours gas or diesel? That is gas. You can only get gas okay. in Australia and you can only get it in an automatic, the Gladiator. So Okay. So the crawl ratio is like 96-ish. To, it's like, yeah, 96 to or 97 to one or so. That sounds and, right and front and rear locked and and you have the disconnectable sway bars exactly yep. okay so that's that is a, a competent package yes and, um and i mean i'm not the one to talk because i've watched the videos but tell the audience what you did to the gladiator in terms of upgrades modifications and whatnot prior to a trip like this because most people would say oh you have to do a hundred different things and it and Keep it light is a great mojo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I knew from the very beginning the goal was to get as remote as possible, um, and Australia has you know big remote. So first thing I added was an additional um, gas tank. So total capacity was uh, I want to say forty gallons. Um, Pretty good. So straight away you know a range of uh, I'm trying to do the conversions in my head a range of six hundred miles <laughs> just off the stock yep. tanks. Yep. Um, I added a, a big water tank with a pump and a filter, um, a big fridge, a kitchen, solar panel, you know, auxiliary battery, and then and then storage for all the food and all the gear. That that was really my main focus of the build. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of capability, I didn't want to touch the drive line at all. Um, I learned, you know, Stock in Africa, I, I didn't need to touch the drive line. So why would I, you know, mm-hmm. compromise reliability? Um, so thirty three inch all terrain tires. AEV two and a half inch suspension lift more than anything, because I wanted to carry the weight Mm -hmm. Um, and getting it up that little bit did help with the breakover angle as well. Before I lifted it, I definitely did scrape the belly a few times. Um, And then after I, uh, it did, it held me up a couple of times. Um, And then gladiators really benefit from like a slight suspension lift and like a one to two upsize on the tire. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it made a big difference for me. Um, and then I, I put a worn winch on the front, AEV front bumper, a snorkel, which turned out to be absolutely essential, um, a roof rack for the first time ever. I've, I've never had one before, but I really wanted to have well, an awning this time so I could have you know good good shelter from the from the weather. Um, couldn't have the roof really rack had one on the Africa Jeep because it would have tilted all the roof rack equipment at a forty five degree angle. <laughs> 
Yeah, and you can actually, if, if I wanted to, I could have put a roof rack on the, the Ursa Minor pop-up roof on uh -huh. that Jeep. Um, but they do say you can only put light things up there, especially when you open the roof. You're, you're um, swag. And, and well, you don't have yeah. spare up there. No, no, or no fuel up there, that's for sure. Oh, um, Which I ended up doing in Australia as well. I put fuel on the roof for the first time, which is definitely not my preference, but I just needed to carry so much of it. Um, I actually carried 250 liters of fuel, which I think is about 80 gallons. So I was carrying a lot of fuel to do those desert crossings. It is, according to Google, at least 66 gallons. Which okay, 66 can, gallons of Considering of most people carry one five-gallon, like, <laughs> rotopack, you know, or jerry yeah. can, like, that is a yeah. shit ton of extra fuel. Yeah, so what did I, I had the, the stock 22-gallon tank. I had the 20-gallon tank i had two five gallon jerrys in the back of the gladiator and i had three five gallon jerrys on the roof <laughs> that's good <laughs> lord yeah and for the so... for the big desert crossing for the for the thousand mile desert cross i drove all of that and at about the halfway point there's one aboriginal community and they have one fuel pump and so i filled up it was about nine dollars a gallon i think for gas oh man <laughs> refilled all of it again and then kept going and then like so that that's how much fuel I needed because driving in the deep sand, you know, in the heat and everything, mm -hmm. the Jeep was getting, I think, about 12 miles a gallon on those desert crossings. That's really not that bad, though. I mean, considering most people in four low are doing like, you know, five to eight. Yeah. And that's that's one of the reasons why I just can't own or drive a vehicle that will get mileage like that bad. Mm -hmm. Because I just have to carry more fuel than is even remotely possible. <laughs> like um, <laughs> exactly yeah 100 series with a v8 yeah um, <laughs> i'm yeah, not so, going to be that oh remote. man <laughs> yeah 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 so it, it was a big balancing act of of being able to get I, I mean that is the most remote i've ever been in my life way more remote than i got in africa um and, oh, and that was the goal and and i'm super happy that we were able to do it let's talk tires because I am a, a super hardcore tire nerd and I've run everything from extreme mud terrains to, you know, dedicated street tires. And, and in some cases, uh, you know, 180 treadwear race tires. So you correct me if I'm wrong. You've been working with Yokohama. That's correct. Prior to Australia. Yes. And you've never had an issue. No flats. That's correct. Not a single flat, okay. not a single problem. These are Yokohama XATs. So they're kind of, they're like aggressive all-terrains that I guess mm -hmm. they blur the line between all-terrain and mud-terrain. Crossover all-terrain yep. is yep. what they um, And they've, they've been brilliant for me. And it, it was really interesting to see. I didn't meet a single other four-wheel drive going around Australia that hadn't had tyre problems. Either mm -hmm. complete failures or multiple punctures. Um, and I drove a couple of the roads, like the Gibb River Road is just everyone swears you have to have two spare tires because you categorically will destroy a tire on that road. The like road the is Dalton or the Dempster, everybody exactly, says the same exactly. thing. Exactly. The, the road is simply that bad that you will destroy a tire. Um, and I never had a single problem. Hmm. Yeah. Any idea how much the Gladiator weighed with everything on it? Yep. I put it on the scale. It was right on its uh, GVWM. So okay. in Australia, so, they're not rated. It had a 3,050 kilogram total vehicle weight. Um, we can okay. do pounds times 2.25, 6,600 yes. and 6,700 maybe. 6,724. Okay. So there you were go. You, Thanks, Google. Were, yes. Thank you, Google. Again. <laughs> um, I do this more often than I would ever care to admit. Uh, so were they, what load rating? Were you those are running? e load rated tires? They were e okay. How much how loaded like for a long trek? Um, were you running at like normal? Like, I guess normal PSI for you is probably like in the 40 ish range, and and air yeah, even you're probably 18s, yeah, exactly. Yep, on the on the Gib River Road and things like that, I usually went to about 20 or 22 depending on kind of what speed I was going to be traveling. And for crazy stuff like that photo, I, I went down to 16 or 18. And in really deep <laughs> sand, I, I went down to 12 once or twice in like oh. very soft beach sand. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. 
yeah, you load. I mean, the E is a, a huge difference between <laughs> like a normal P rated or even a C that a lot of off roaders completely neglect um, because it's not just how much weight is carried down it, you know, in a normal like paved section of path, but also how much force comes down on it <laughs> in instances like the picture that Chris just showed. <laughs> Yeah, and I feel like having the e-load rating, it, it's kind of just a bit of insurance that you know the sidewalls are a bit tougher and that mm -hmm. the thing is going to handle a bit more abuse. And th I think that's been proven that they they were up to the challenge. So knowing sorry. that I finally were... found Gib, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> was that was that one of the road train? It was a road train, no, yeah. Okay. The, uh, what was it? Ninety three meters long or something? Something. Good lord. Yeah, they have, it's a it's a, an eighteen wheeler, but it has five or six trailers on it that's yeah we don't do that here <laughs> no in australia it's australia only does it in like some regions lots of australia they're illegal but there are the the very remote parts that it's kind of the only way that goods are transported mm -hmm. so last tire question because this is where my nerdy of this peaks why all-terrain or crossover all-terrain and not dedicated mud terrain at this point what i've found on my expeditions and, and going around the world is that you, you do wind up spending a good portion of the trip on pavement even when you try not to you, it'd probably be impossible to do less than 20 or 30 percent of your time on pavement um even when you're off-road maybe 40 or 50 percent of the time it's on good gravel anyway and so i find it's really only let's say 20 percent of the time i would say you're even thinking about using low range you're even really, you know, four wheel driving. And so for me, it's a big compromise where I don't want a dedicated rock crawler on 40 inch mud terrains. I kind of want a long distance travel vehicle, you know, that is, yeah. is suitable for all terrain. And mm -hmm. all terrain tires have worked really well for me. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and I've actually, a couple of people I've met going around Africa with mud terrains and a couple in Australia as well. They just get torn up so much faster. I find they they chunk from the gravel. They don't last nearly as long. I, I feel like mud terrains just aren't as durable, and they they don't handle you know like tens and tens and thousands of miles of kind of rough terrain. Mm. Hmm. 